Okay, this video lecture is going to focus on the process of transpiration, which is basically water movement through a plant in the roots, through the stem, and out the leaves. It's important uh, for many aspects of the plant, one in particular cooling as well as moving nutrients. So when we're looking at tr the transpiration process, we have water movement in the plant. We have the vascular plants have conducting systems for transporting fluids and nutrients through the plant. M water and minerals enter through the, the roots and are transported through in the xylem. We see the xylem pictured here on the left. Carbohydrates are synthesized by the photosynthetic process and are transported through the plant in the phloem. We see that on the right here. These little red circles represent the sucrose or sugars. You'll notice that the water or xylem goes from the bottom of the plant towards the top. Phloem in this instance is kind of moving downwards, but it can move anywhere. Um, so phloem is able to go up or down the plant. Xylem is going mainly uh, from the roots to the shoots as we call it from the bottom all the way up and through the plant in that one direction. Now the flow of minerals in and out and within the plant we see here. Water is passively transported into the roots that enters the xylem and we can see that here at picture number one. As we look here in the stem region, the forces of cohesion and adhesion cause water molecules to form in a column of xylem. These are little water molecules and this is looking at the xylem that's in the plant. In number three here, the water moves from the xylem to the mesophyll cells, evaporates from their surfaces and leaves to the plant by diffusion through the stomata. That's how it's going to leave as water vapor. And this whole process is keeps repeating. This is why you have to constantly water um, your house plants, for example, because they're constantly going through this transpiration process. Now, root pressure, several factors uh, are at work to move water up the height of the plant. You can see water entering here at the root hairs. Those are the very fine areas, and that's where water is going to be coming in. The initial movement of water into roots involves osmosis, and water moves into the cells of the root because the fluid in the xylem contains more solutes than its surroundings. These solutes in the cell here are more uh, densely packed with, for example, sugars and uh, nutrients and ions, that water through osmosis is naturally going to want to move into those root hairs, ultimately entering the xylem and moving up through the plant. This osmotic force is called root pressure, but by itself it's not sufficient to push the water up the plant stem. And we kind of see another example here of the water surrounding these soil particles entering the root hairs, ultimately working its way into the xylem. There's more to it than just this to create a sufficient root pressure. There's also the solute potential, and this is represented uh, by this symbol here. The solute potential is called the osmotic potential. Water moves in response to the, the difference in water potential between the two systems, the left and right sides of the tube. So in a perfectly balanced system, we see the water at the same height on the left and the right of the tube. Because there is a difference in water potential, water will move from the soil to the plant's roots root cells via the process of osmosis. So we see here we have some solutes. Water is naturally going to move towards those solutes. It's going to want to try to dilute those solutes through this semi-permeable membrane. This is why solute potential is sometimes called, called osmotic potential. Now there's other ways we could add positive pressure. If we add pressure we could force water to kind of move and increase this side of the tube. If we create a suction effect or a negative pressure we could draw water um, going this way. So again, pure water is going to be even, but here's just a pr uh, kind of a passive example of by adding solutes to a semi-permeable membrane, the osmotic flow of that water is going to shift to one side. This is occurring also in the help of capillary action. So in addition to root pressure, capillary action adds to the pull, put that in quotes there, to the movement of water up the stem. It's kind of not a you know, physical like pull as you think, like a pull of a magnet. But what capillary action is doing is it's the result from a tiny electrical attractions of polar water molecules to the surface that carry an electrical charge. This attraction is called adhesion. So when we're looking at capillary action, here we see um, a red liquid and we see different diameter tubes. As the diameter of the tube is getting smaller, we're noticing that the ability for that red liquid to travel up the tube is increasing. And we see that here we have our gradual increase. As that gets smaller and finer, it's able to fight the force of gravity and overcome that force to a greater extent. Uh, this capillary action is not strong enough to help pull water up the stem, but this is a, again, all these factors are coming together helping the process. Capillary action depends a lot on the radius of the tube, and you can see again those smaller radius having the greatest degree of ability to resist um, the force of gravity. A denser fluid in the same tube rises to a smaller height than other with other factors being equal. So here we're seeing a more dense material and a less dense of equal diameter and how that affects the degree of capillary action. 
we, this adhesion and cohesion that I mentioned, keep in mind that cohesion is like molecules sticking together. We see the two water molecules sticking together, two water molecules sticking together. Um, because of the hydrogen bonds, it's cohesive. Uh, in adhesion, dissimilar molecules are sticking together. So water will interact uh, and is charged with polar molecules. So here we have the polarity of the water adhering or sticking to the outside surface here. So it could be the water to the surface of a leaf. It could be water to the interior parts of the xylem. It's that kind of water attaching or adhering, think of like a piece of tape, tape adhering to the wall, adhering to desk, sticking to something other than itself. Now this transpiration, how does this kind of relate to this final transpiration process? The final pulls, the process of moving water up the plant shoot is this transpiration. Water evaporating from the tops of the leaves uh, is the tube that pulls the column of water to, through the bottom roots. The column of water does not collapse because water molecules are attracted to each other. This is the process again called cohesion. The narrower the diameter of the tube, the more tensile strength that will occur or resistance to separation of the water column that will help again move that water up through the plant. That transpiration by which the plant is leaving uh, the, the plant leaf in this case. So more than 90% of the water taken in by the plant is lost to the atmosphere, mostly through the leaves, and specifically through the stomata of the leaves, the pores. Water first passes into the pockets of air in the spongy mesophyll, and then evaporates out the stomata. High humidity and low temperatures decrease the rates of transpiration. So because we're talking a biological system, there are factors that do impact this. The transpiration process in general, looking at kind of a nice uh, image here at a tree, and this would be true for even house plants. The cohesion and tenation theory of sap ascent is shown, where we, again, having that water come in through the root hairs, those really fine areas, and then entering the xylem, and then working its way through with cohesive and adhesive properties, drawing water up through the xylem, ultimately reaching to the leaves, uh, ultimately reaching to the mesophyll cells, and then ultimately leaving out the stomata. So evaporation from the mesophyll cells produces a negative water potential gradient. It causes water to move upward through the roots and ultimately through the xylem. You can see that while the root cells are a negative uh, pressure, there is a greater negativity of the atmosphere and the leaf tip. So this in relation here, because this is more negative, water is being pulled in that direction. The atmosphere is very negative, and ultimately that's why it's going out the stomata, and that's why the stomata are regulated to help reduce the amount of water loss. Now, impacts on the transpiration rate. Temperature, as you see, as we increase temperature, the rate of transpiration will increase and then plateau to a certain point. Uh, wind velocity, as the wind velocity keeps increasing, so does the rate of transpiration. And kind of an opposite effect is humidity. As you increase the humi humidity, as you increase the moisture that's in the air, the rate of transpiration will actually inverse or decrease. So if there's more water in the air, it's harder for that water to evaporate, and therefore the rate of transpiration will decrease for that plant. Now this stomata, as I mentioned, are reg uh, is regulated. When guard cells are plump and swollen, they're said to be turgid, and they're gonna be having that stomata be open, as we can see here. When those kind of lose their water, they'll kind of collapse, and they'll collapse and close on themselves, and this is allowing the plant to reduce the amount of water loss. You can see again here, where's um, certain environmental stresses that can relate to that. There can be hormones that can affect that. But when those cells are nice and swollen, they're open, allowing for water exchange. And then when that water is lost, they will close. Balance between water and air. So when a plant is open, their stomata, they can breathe and exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen, which is what they need to do. However, when the stomata are open, the plant is also losing water and runs the risk of dehydrating. So this is why plants want to be regulating this process because they want to maintain a high degree of turgor pressure. But if they leave their stomata open for too long, they can wilt and die. So that's why they're constantly regulating this to a certain point that if you don't water the plant that's in the container, it's ultimately going to uh, wither away and sadly perish. So if you do provide plants with the right amount of water, they can regulate fine and grow. Uh, if they're not, they're gonna go through a wilting process. And if you don't want them for an extended period of time and they do need the water, uh, they ultimately will uh, burn and die due to dehydration. So water your plants.